Welcome to uh, Lovecraft Cocktails Does Quarantiki. We think this is maybe officially round four, if you don't count all of the test sessions and test runs and all of those sorts of things. So uh, we've got still sort of testing things out and we'll see how this goes. So the theme for today is, hey pooch, I bought this bottle of X and it's been sitting around and I don't know what to do with it and is there anything tiki that I can do with it? So we'll try and see if we can work our way through a couple of the things that I've got that are sitting around and see what we can do with them. Maggie says she can hear okay. All right, excellent, sound good. All right, uh, first up, uh, Benedictine. Um, I know a lot of people that have bottles of Benedictine on their bar, and it's good for a number of, of things, but it's a niche herbal, monks produce it, so you don't ever go through a lot of it, which means you have a bottle that's, well, mostly full of Benedictine at this point, and needing to do something with it. So, hmm, a quick search through the Tiki archives, and I came up with a drink that actually, well, there's a couple drinks that use Benedictine, but this sounded yummy, so I'm going to give it a try. Please note, I'm going to give it a try. This means I've never made this drink before. I don't know what it's going to come out like. We're just going to try it. Okay, so this is uh, named after a French general, Pétillon. And that's what it's called, is the Pétillon. We start with a cocktail shaker. Ta-da! We're going to shake this over cubed ice, so I'm just going to grab a little cubed ice here. Cubed ice. All right. Uh, calls for simple syrup. We are going to use a Demerara syrup and it calls for half an ounce. So we'll start with half an ounce of the syrup. Half ounce right there. Shouldn't have poured it over the ice, should have poured it in here, but live and learn. It'll all be fine. It'll shake out in the end. Uh, we need three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Fortunately, I put the wife to work. I have lime juice. Uh, this is also important because she's going to take a cocktail class later this evening and they need lime juice. So, three quarters of an ounce. I even had to go to the store. She did. She braved the outside world in order to get the ingredients to do tonight. So we all owe her big time. Three quarters of an ounce of Benedictine. One of the nice things about this cocktail is that it actually calls for a fairly large amount of Benedictine. A lot of cocktails are like, ah, a quarter ounce, maybe a half ounce. Three quarters of an ounce is a fairly large amount. There's three quarters of an ounce Benedictine. We need a nice rum, but we want something relatively clean, so something that's uh, probably blended, not too, not age too long. So I'm going to go with one of my old standbys, which is the Angostura 1919. 1919. And we need how much of this? Uh, three quarters of an ounce. This should be an easy one to remember. It's three quarters of just about everything except the simple syrup. So there's three quarters of the Angostura 1919. So far so good. All right, here's where we go off the rails because I know very few of you actually have this in your bar. Um, it calls for Clarion, which um, we love Clarion. We love the people that produce this. We love what it does for Haiti. Um, go buy more Clarion. And three quarters of an ounce of Clarion. This stuff is rich and funky and just kind of awesome. So, do a little of the clear in, three quarters of an ounce. Lift this up. Shake. Mm. 
there we go. Now this is going into martini glasses. So I'm gonna go get a couple of chilled martini. One of the benefits of having a freezer back there. It's a couple of small martini glasses. Unlid that. That goes back here. And we are going to just strain this, not double strain it, just strain it. Soup. One for me, one for my brave wife. And to you all, salute. So if you do not happen to have Clarin, um, I would recommend using something particularly funky. Um, it's pretty good. Probitas might be a good uh, example of something to do uh, when you don't have the Clarin. Uh, it's going to have a different flavor profile, but because the uh, Probitas has some Hamden in it, uh, it might be pretty good. Have to give it a try sometime. I quite like that. That. Um, that's successful. I'm going to have to uh, put that into rotation, I think. All right, that is the pétillon. And pardon my French because, well, I took Spanish in high school and college. So that's round one. Uh, any questions while I do a quick cleanup of some of the things and here? And we're back. Hmm. A little bit of funk to it. It's sweet. Got some tartness. Hints of the herbal notes of the Benedictine. It's really nice. The Clarin does not overpower it like I thought it might. Okay. So that's experiment one down. That seems like it was successful. Now we go to the danger. <clears throat> So, what if you want to do that for 10 people? Do you do five of them, or is there a way to mix in bulk? Um, hmm. Uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't mix, say, two or three of those at the same time. So just double up all the proportions in each shaker. So you could do two different shakers or three different shakers if you wanted to do five or six. Um, yeah, that would probably be good. Uh, you can also batch all of the ingredients to start with and then just pour the mix into a shaker and shake that and prep each drink as you go that way. So you can prep the mix so you're not having to do all of the mixing ahead of time. Often when I'm throwing the parties, what I'll do is um, I will put all of the non-alcoholic ingredients into mixes for each one of the drinks. So all I have to do is Oh, you want zombie. Okay, that's drink container number one. That goes in at X number of ounces, and then I add the rums to it and whatever else that is alcoholic that goes in. And then bada boom, bada bing, shake it up, stir it up, blend it up however it needs to go. And that actually makes things a lot faster because you don't have to sit there and blend the three or four natural ingredients in at the same time. I wouldn't put the alcohol in because that has the potential for being very expensive when people decide they don't want that particular drink that night. Because, well, you're going to have to drink it pretty quickly at that point. Um, Maggie if, says, thanks, fixating on June vacation plans. Oh, let's hope. Let's, let's hope. <laughs> okay, so um, this next cocktail. Um, tiki purists are going to shoot me for this. But I swear, it's a thing. Um, so I did a introduction to gin not too long ago for a number of friends of ours. And I didn't know a whole lot about gin, so I had to go out and do some research. And one of the first things that you pop up when you look at the history of gin is that it actually starts with this alcohol called Genevieve. Um, Bowles is a product of Amsterdam. Um, and unlike pretty much your gins of today, Genevieve is malty. Uh, it's, it's vaguely reminiscent of bad scotch, um, sort of a scotch and gin mix. Uh, so 
we did some tasting of the Genevieve, but n not a lot, and it wasn't cared for a great deal. So uh, I do have a shout out to some of my bartender friends of, hey, what do I do with Genevieve? Well, we're going to try to do a recipe that I found online, which is a Genevieve based Mai Tai. Do not yell at me, purists. <laughs> okay, so Genevieve. Uh, so for Mai Tai, we are going to shake this over crushed ice. So I need to go get some crushed ice. Happen to have some right here. Crushed ice, probably be out four ounces, maybe six in there. And we're going to go with a half ounce of lime juice. Half ounce. Lime juice. Deep. One and a half ounces of pineapple juice. Assuming I have one and a half ounces of fresh pineapple. Well, there's one. And there's a half. Nicely done. I did get you new pineapples. We do have more pineapples, so it's all going to be good. Uh, curacao. Orange liqueur. We're going to use dry curacao. Uh, number of, you can get a sweet curacao. You can uh, Grand Marnier, for example. Um, you can go the other route and go triple sec. Um, but in this case, a dry curacao is basically the way you want to go for your Mai Tais. So, uh, curacao and uh, one full ounce of this. There's an ounce. One and a half ounces. Chenevere. <laughs> Let's see how we do this. There's one. And there's a half. This also calls for a couple of dashes of absinthe, and so our, here we go. I do three because I like absinthe. All right, that's it. Now, some of you might be thinking wait, pooch, my ties have orjad in them. Uh, not this one, because of the malty nature of the Genevieve, uh, the recommendation is, yeah, let's not add any more of the, uh, uh, that kind of nature to it. So we're going to see how this goes. We have a charity. All of the sweetness here is really being provided by the uh, pineapple juice. So we're going to lid this up. Thank you. Do a little faster shake on the crushed ice because it will dilute much faster. And this is going unstrained into a rocks glass. A couple of frosted rocks glasses. Bing. Pour a little there. A little there. Make sure this evens out. Okay, they may get to see my yucky face. They may indeed get to see the yucky face. Wouldn't surprise me. You're probably going to take the smaller one, aren't you? Because of potential lucky face. Cheers. Ch cheers. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try. Doesn't smell awful. That's not awful. Folks, we may have found a way to drink some Genevieve. Um, the pineapple really cuts the sting of the... <laughs> the sting. Yeah. The stank of the ginger. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't put this as my favorite drink, but. No, and it feels to me like it still needs a little something else, like maybe uh, um, some nutmeg or something, just to give it a little spice to it. Mm. Um, yeah, that might that might work. But it it definitely comes through as being very malty. Um, 
you know, I hate to say it, but it's kind of like a tiki beverage made with Zima. Um, you know, it's, it's got that kind of malt beverage -y. Uh, that's not going to be my favorite. I'm going to go back to the Petion because that's much yummier. But hey, that's an acceptable way to use up some Genevieve um, and still call it tiki. So I'm not at all dis displeased with that. We may so uh, that puts us at two down. Oh, I got to show off my latest tiki mug. Does she? She does. Oh, yeah, I got her this tiki mug. Black Lagoon Room Takeout. The Creature from the Crab Rangoon Tiki Mug. You yeah. gotta love that. And it's so got cute. straw oh, holes. Mm -hmm. I've got a hold. Okay. <laughs> um, the top comes off. Yeah, the top comes off. Ta -da. Next time you can hand that to me. And have you do it? it then have me do it. That'll work. Okay. Hmm. Yum. All right. So, two down. Shall we go on to a third? We have any comments? Anybody else join us? Nope. Nope? All right. Oh, Maggie says my uh, takeout, crab ring, Black Lagoon takeout is cute. Uh, I believe the website is The Black Lagoon. Um, well, I'll like double it. I'll double check it, but uh, they they are pretty much sold out of those. But they are going to be releasing new colors of the creature come this summer. So if you follow them, you might have a chance of getting one of those for your very own. Um, they're very deserving, and uh, you may have noticed. And sometimes scanning around, there's this patch over here on the wall that says "My Tide Till I Die." Yeah, that patch is also from them. And so is at least one of the pins on the hat. Yes, this guy right here that has a creature around a cocktail glass. They do good stuff. We like them. Shout out to them. All right, what's next? Uh, brandy. So um, my dad was one of these guys that... Uh, his taste in alcohol was maybe not the most refined and sophisticated, but he really enjoyed having a good brandy every once in a while. And as a consequence, in the house when I was growing up, we always had a bottle of Christian Brothers brandy on hand. Um, there's many brandies out there. Christian Brothers is a fine organization. It's maybe not what you would call top of the line brandy, but. Uh, Perfectly serviceable, especially in a cocktail. So, let's figure out what we're going to do with the little Christian Brothers brandy. Okay, this is a drink from uh, Smuggler's Cove, uh, created to the best of my knowledge by Martin Kate. He may have just picked it up from somewhere else and put it in his book. I'd have to double check on that. Um, by the way, Smuggler's Cove out of San Francisco, also fantastic. They are closed at the moment because of governor's orders on bars and restaurants being closed. And uh, while they are a venerable rum institution, uh, they could use your help as well. So if you happen to be coming from the West Coast or you just want to throw some money at a really good group of people, Smuggler's Cove is, uh, could do with a little assistance. Uh, check out their, uh, their online shop and get some cool stuff from them. All right, so 12 mile limit. What are we going to do here? We uh, are going to do another shaken cocktail. Do that. Oh, we can see the top of the flashing. Do you want to give a call out to our present from Ruth? Oh, yes. So uh, in March, we celebrated our um, wedding anniversary in Kansas City. And one of our wondrous friends who's out that way actually lives in Lawrence in one of our uh, previous houses. Um, sent us back with this little guy who's got the flaming little torches. You can see those kind of flickering. Yeah, he's pretty cute. So we're going to keep him on the bar here. Right. There we go. Okay. Uh, 12 mile limit. So this is uh, shaken over cube ice. Is that 
This starts with some lemon juice. So we've got fresh squeezed lemon, half ounce. Half ounce lemon juice. Grenadine. Half ounce of grenadine. Okay, so grenadine. Most of the grenadines that you will buy in the supermarket are high fructose corn syrup that is colored red. Uh, is made from pomegranate um, and is basically a simple syrup made with pomegranate. Uh, there's some very good commercial ones out there. Uh, I like Jack Ruby, um, but I don't think Jack Ruby has quite the right color for my taste. It, it's very dark, um, and so it can also be a little one note. So as a consequence, what I did was I mixed up a little um, hibiscus syrup, which is a brighter red than Jack Ruby. Um, Mixed that in uh, with a little bit of the Pama pomegranate liqueur and some Jack Ruby. So we've got three ingredients here to make my homemade mix of grenadine, which you can tell is a nice reddish color there. Yep. Not quite the fluorescent red that uh, you think of when you think of bar grenadine or maraschino cherries and that sort of thing, but still bright, vibrant red. The uh, hibiscus syrup is gonna add some floral notes to it, so it's not just pomegranate and sugar. All right, uh, half ounce, right? Half ounce. Half ounce. Ta -da. Need a little rum in here. We're gonna go with a nice clean Diplomatico Blanco, and I don't remember how much, full ounce positioned. One full ounce of the Blanco. And it has a half ounce of rye. Uh, so I'm not going to go with um, a really super complex rye because I think those subtle notes will get lost in the cocktail a bit. So I'm going with a good just run-of-the-mill stock rye that I like to keep on hand which is Filibuster, local company. Um, I believe these guys are currently making hand sanitizer, <laughs> um, so they're doing good jobs, good things for us. And then we need a half ounce of this brandy. So, Christian Brothers, as I started to twist that top off, I was suddenly reminded of one of the previous attempts at this, where I wanted to open up a top and it was stuck. I realized I had not tried all of the tops. I was like, oh no, please don't be stuck. Please don't be stuck. Yeah, this is a great way to go use up your brandy if you can get the container open. Yeah, not a good thing. All right, so there we go. Kind of reddish. Let's lid it up. Becca says hi. Hey, Becca. Todd there with you? We'll find out. There's always a delay. Now this, uh, commonly calls, it's commonly served in a coupe. So we're going to go grab us a couple of chilled, chilled coupe coops. glasses. Two chilled coupe glasses. I did only make proportions of one of these, so we're going to lid one up here and then we're going to go with the other one and see how far we get. So this is actually supposed Todd to be... Todd is watching weird cartoons. Really? So shocked. Uh, we're going to double strain this so that we get rid of the ice shards in here and make this kind of as clear as possible. Look at that pretty color. Now, if I were throwing around these drinks professionally, this would be in here, that would be filled to the wash line, 
and it would be all good. Instead, uh, I'm going to split this out and make it a little easier to hand the uh, glass around. And this is, we're just going to top this with a cherry on a flamingo stick, like such. Hand that to the uh, wife. One 12 mile limit. Mm. Oh, we got an mmm from Star. I would say that is definitely an mmm. I'm definitely the uh, the larger rum, or excuse me, <laughs> well I'm definitely the larger rum fan, but I'm also a larger rye fan than she is. Uh, so I'm so we have two that very pretty drink. Mm -hmm. And then we have a question from Maggie. Yes, Maggie. So if I, I have to buy a dozen glasses to take to my vacation, where she's going to be drinking, I guess, what is the most versatile? Cooper or rocks? You know, I'm going to have to go with the rocks glass. Um, this is a single rocks glass. Uh, this is commonly typical double rocks glass. Um, depends on how much partying you're going to be doing on your vacation, I guess. Um, but any of these coupe glasses or martini glasses, the drink can be served in a rocks glass. Uh, you can do cool things with garnishes with the rocks glasses. Um, they fit in your hand nicely. Uh, the only qualm I would have is that both the martini glass and the coupe are stemmed and so you can hold them like such and not transfer your palm heat to the drink so for drinks that need to be really cold something with a stem is really nice um, you can kind of do that with the rocks glass by picking up it at the bottom but it's really then sort of unstable but I think I'd go with the rocks um, in general, or, or, oh, go with something like this. So this kind of splits the difference. Um, I'm not sure what you would call this, whether this is a, a true Nick Nora uh, glass piece of glassware, but it's got a stem, but it's also got a nice big bowl on it as well. So it'd be perfectly fine for serving something like this or something like this. That'd be perfectly nice for you. How's that? So she's got family group and she's going to try and have a drink night instead of having to cook dinner. Well, there you go. Vitally important that you have a prep crew so you're not sitting there squeezing all the limes and lemons. Pop that in there. Tasty, tasty. Oh. All right. Anything else? What have we got? So from the prep mm. crew, mm -hmm. a lime. Prep crew. A it's lime. approximately an ounce of lime juice, so you know what to do. You uh, roll it out, uh, roll it out on a hard surface uh, to kind of loosen it up, um, and that'll get you a little more juice out of it. And you want to have a good juicer. Uh, we like this style. Um, we have an electric if I'm doing like a dozen, but we've got one that presses it down. You put the lot face down so the rind is up here and it inverts it while you're uh, here. It goes in like that, and then this just closes on it. Now, this is a already uh, squeezed lime husk, hence there's not getting a whole lot of lime juice out of that, but this guy will definitely produce uh, a fair amount of lime for you. Right. Uh, that's got us for what we can do to get rid of some Benedictine, uh, a little Christian Brothers brandy, dropping bottles left and right. Genevieve. I know my bartender friends are going to yell at me and give me all sorts of recipes for how to use up my Genevieve. So the last one that I have um, comes about because people want to do Singapore slings and Singapore sling has a unique ingredient in it, or not particularly unique, but um, it 
just doesn't tend to get used in a lot of other things, and that is cherry hearing. Uh, okay, so what do we do with cherry hearing if we're not doing a gin-based cocktail like the Singapore Sling? So um, that's what we're going to try and do is uh, make something using the cherry hearing um, that is not a Singapore Sling. Now, if you like Singapore Slings and you have plenty of gin on hand, by all means, make more Singapore Slings because they're tasty beverages. Um, they actually predate Tiki because um, the Singapore Sling was created God, in the 30s? I think it was in the 30s? Was it the Raffles Hotel, I think? Um, just dredging out of my brain. So it actually, the Singapore Sling does predate Tiki. Doesn't mean that you can't get a good Singapore Sling at most Tiki restaurants though, Tiki bars. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this? So what we are gonna do with this is something called an ankle breaker. How's that? Um, this is actually gonna be a variant on the ankle breaker uh, because what I'm gonna do is use my hibiscus syrup instead of using uh, the, um, what would normally be just a simple one-to-one -one straight up clear uh, syrup. So what are we gonna do here? Uh, this is another shaken cocktail. See, I'm being nice here. I'm not doing cocktails that require blending or you know, particular skills of needing a, a mixing pint and being able to do the little swirly thing with the bar spoon. Maggie, this is for you. So it's, everything is shaken, nice and easy to do on a vacation. Uh, you don't have to lug around blending equipment and that sort of thing. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna lid this up. This is uh, crushed ice again? Crushed ice, yeah. Ice. Half ounce of the hibiscus syrup. Right in there. I'm also trying to avoid things like orgeat, which people might not have on hand um, unless they're true tiki files. Uh, we need an ounce of lemon juice. Yeah, that's a lot of lemon juice. Um, I think I mentioned in the one of the early ones of these that I did, like I've done so many, like four. Uh, but for me, the big difference between lemon and lime juice is they both bring that sourness, that tartness to the cocktail. But the lemon juice is very upfront. It doesn't tend to linger through the rest of the cocktail, through the entirety of the sip. It's sort of a quick hit of sour and then goes away and lets the rest of the sip go and do whatever it wants to do. Oh, I'm gonna... We have these. So, Oop. these green glasses green that glasses. the uh, oh, juice these. are in. Ah. Yeah, sorry. I love these. I also love the booze that comes in these. This is uh, Choya Plum Wine. Uh, if you've been to a sushi restaurant with me, you've probably seen me order Choya. Um, but it's got a wide mouth um, and a pour spout. So the wide mouth makes it very easy to clean because I'm not only prep, I'm the dishwashing crew. So I get the creative end of things. That's kind of cool. Works for us somehow. Um, now we need a high test, high proof rum to go with this. So um, you want a big, powerful, smash you in the face, overproof rum. Uh, it's hard to go wrong with the Lemon Heart 151. And that is what we're going to do. And it's a full ounce of the Lemon Heart 151. Oh, I could sniff that all day. Oh. All right, so this is going to go in there. And then we're going to want to pour this into chilled glasses. And uh, I have just the thing for this. Uh, I, I think this is a, an amusing twist uh, for an ankle breaker. We must have had 30 people send us pictures of these glasses saying, Oh my God, Star and Pooch, you have to have these. Um, and the reason why I think they're appropriate for ankle breaker is because, well, despite having multiple legs, tentacles, whatever, they're 
not the most stable glasses in the world, but they are really pretty. So we're going to use them chilled, of course. So this goes in over the crushed ice, lock it tight. Now the cherry hearing is kind of a reddish brown color. The uh, hibiscus syrup as well. Um, well. It's got sort of a nice fruity smell to it. Um, you may also see uh, maraschino liqueur and think, oh, maraschino liqueur. That's cherry, right? Maraschinos? Well, it's actually made from the pits and has an completely and utterly different flavor than cherry hearing. Here we go. Must be arm day in your exercise routine. <laughs> I do tend to get a lot of, of workout doing these, uh, but it's just kind of fun. All right, uh, shake crushed ice, unstrained into a rocks glass. So here we go. So it's not a rocks glass, obviously, but it is really cute. So we're going to do that. Very nice. And then over here, I have just a twist of some lemon. I'm just going to slice right down here. Express, ah, express that. Drop that in. Express it. Drop that in. And there we go. We have nice red ankle breaker. Star, you want one of these? Yes, please. Look at this. I'm only making one of each and we're splitting it. So neither of us is getting two out of hand. Star has that uh, bar class to attend to this evening, so yeah. we got to keep her manual dexterity up. Mm. All right, Star. Um, is it my imagination, or does this have a vaguely chocolate note to it? A bit. This is not my favorite of the drinks. That's usually code for, hey Pooch, you're going to get to finish this drink for me. I don't know, I'm, I'm getting very much a, a chocolate cherry kind of flavor to this. But, you know those the cherry bomb candies, the old oh. ones. Yeah, those, that's the kind of flavor I'm getting off of this, um, which I'm pretty sure is not one of Star's favorite candies. So as a consequence, am I getting that one? Yes, yeah, well? I think you're gonna get this one. Becca asked which class I'm taking. Um, there's a group in DC doing uh, happy hour cocktails led by a bartender who will teach you to make a drink or two. I did one two weeks ago with uh, Coconut Club, mm -hmm. and tonight uh, Chris, from Chris from Coconut Club, right. and tonight Robin, who we met at Espita, yeah. who's now at uh, Copycat and uh, Astoria. Right. He he um, was at um, Destination Wedding, right. but I believe Destination Wedding closed. I'm not sure. Right? I'm not yeah. sure. But uh, so he's doing the class. Um, I'll post the info because they do one every at least one every week and they're like 10 bucks and they're a lot of fun it's a zoom class so it's interactive uh, my time yeah well there we go i never thought the day would come where um there would be a lemon heart 151 drink and a genevieve drink and star would go for the genevieve drink but um i'm happy to be drinking these and I don't have to have any manual dexterity for her class because as she makes cocktails. All I'm going to do is drink them. So uh, there we go. We've got uh, ways of using up some cherry hearing, some brandy, some Genevieve, and a little Benedictine. And if you need to use up rum for any reason, uh, I might just humbly suggest that as long as the rum was worth buying in the first place, just go with a daiquiri. 
lime, simple syrup, or sugar, and rum. It's kind of hard to beat. All right, that's it for another session of Lovecraft Cocktails Does Quarantiki. Hope we helped make your Saturday a little bit better, a little brighter. Um, I always enjoy making drinks. I just wish that I could be making them for people and uh, not having to necessarily drink all of them ourselves. So. Oh no, 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 no. No. I think you should try and figure out what to make with the Slivowitz. No. <laughs> uh, hand sanitizer. <laughs> Rats. It's not high enough alcohol. <laughs>